Belarus is sending thousands of migrants from the Middle East into Lithuania. Lukashenko, the president of Belarus, has openly said that he won't stop any of these migrants from illegally entering Lithuania. But on top of that, now there's evidence that Belarus is actively helping sending these migrants over the border into Lithuania. Now it's actually gotten so bad that countries within the EU have pressured Lithuania into declaring a state of emergency and actually put up a barbed wire fence along their long border with Belarus. Because Belarus Belarus is not a member of the EU, but Lithuania is, so if these migrants make it there, they can move anywhere they want to within the EU, and thereby further increasing Europe's migrant crisis. Alright, welcome back to the channel guys, and thank you for joining me in today's video. So this quickly is becoming a huge mess. Uh, mostly right now in Lithuania, but it certainly also has the potential to affect the rest of Europe as well. And let me explain why. Over the last few years, some people in Belarus have been making a lot of money transporting in migrants from the Middle East, primarily from Iraq into Belarus. They land in the capital of Minsk, but the government and the military is then transporting them up to migrant camps, newly erected migrant camps along the border with Lithuania. These migrant camps are now spilling over over because they took in so many migrants. So now reports are coming out that these migrants are being let out into Lithuania and on purpose as well. To put this issue into perspective for you, last year Lithuania had around 80 people crossing the border illegally. The whole year 80 people. That number was beat this July in just one day with 130 people crossing the border. The number is now up to 4,000 people. It's 50 times what it was last year and it's happening in just a matter of two or three months and it's ramping up. It's not slowing down. Remember that Lithuania is a pretty small country of like two and a half million people if I remember correctly and it's gotten so bad that they now had to declare a state of emergency and actually put up this barbed wire fence along the long border with Belarus. The problem is that the border is like 600 kilometers long so the government is now already having to pay like 48 million euros for this barbed wire fence alone and that's without counting the cost of taking in this many like 4,000 migrants in a single year. Because the numbers are spinning out of control, the government is now planning to erect these new... Stop saying erect. The government is planning to build these new detention centers to keep all of these migrants in place. For some reason, this is being met with like violent protests in the streets of uh, Lithuania, where mostly young people are protesting these detention centers, which I don't really get because your country is facing something unprecedented, at least in newer history, and you have to take measures. You have to take action against it, right? And I, I think this is a decent way to do it. It's not like these detention centers are like second world war era detention centers that they're, they're modern they have what they're supposed to have and it's just a place to keep migrants uh, so i don't really get it when your border is being overrun it seems like the logical thing to do so you might be asking yourself why is belarus or more accurately lukashenko doing this to lithuania it seems like it's on purpose as well take a look at what he said recently <laughs> Литвой, Латвии и Украины и превратимся в отстойник беглых с Афганистана, Ирана, Ирака, Ливии, Сирии, то он просто заблуждается. Мы никогда не будем никого держать. He says, why should he stop these people from leaving and that Belarus become one big migrant camp? So every single week, Lukashenko lets two huge Boeing 474s come into Belarus from Iraq filled with migrants. These migrants pay smugglers up to $1,400 to take them to Grodno near the border. From there, they can cross into Lithuania. The Associated Press is explaining that Lithuania says the migrant influx in the past months is an act of retaliation by Belarus's authoritarian president Alexander Lukashenko to increase sanctions by the EU toward his country over an air piracy incident. The Interior Ministry distributed a video shot from a helicopter as a proof that large groups of immigrants were being escorted to Lithuania's EU border by vehicles belonging to Belarus's border guards. 
So this most likely looks like it's Lukashenko trying to pressure the EU from putting all of these sanctions on his government not too long ago. Lukashenko's government is going to deny this, but it sure looks convenient that you all of a sudden have a chance to get rid of all of these migrants that you've been taking in for a long time and gaining a lot of money from taking in as well. So here's the big problem that the government of Lukashenko is facing from doing it this way. He might actually be able to gain something from this short term because stories like these could pressure the EU into lifting some of these economic sanctions that they put on Belarus. So it could look like he's actually going to gain something from this whole conflict. But at the same time, the EU has been so successful in creating an anti-Lukashenko narrative in all of Europe, but also within the EU, that in the long term, I think this will only push uh, people around Belarus, but also the people within Belarus to to detest uh, the the government even more because they have access to the internet. They can read these international stories. And I wonder if this isn't going to press to pressure the Lukashenko government even more. And in the long term, when people within Belarus are seeing how they take in this many migrants and now they are pressuring their neighbors with their own mistakes of taking in too many migrants, right? I, I wonder if it won't lead to, to the growing discontent, the growing, growing feeling of discontent with the Belarusian people against the government. The, I wonder if it won't lead to like a civil war. I know it sounds dramatic, but a civil war doesn't have to mean what it meant in the past. It could look very different in our age. This is a bit more speculation than anything, so take it with a grain of salt. But I think something has happened over the last couple of years in Belarus that has effectively ended democracy there. Firstly, you have the election of Lukashenko, which I think a lot of people in Belarus believe was rigged, at least to some extent, and certainly outside forces mostly believe that it was completely rigged, right? At the same time Lukashenko gets into office, Belarus begins creating closer ties with Russia. And that in and of itself is not a bad thing at all. But they begin to deal with like political opposition the same way that you see in Russia, which Belarus hasn't had a history of doing. So all of a sudden you begin to see political opposition either get exiled, that's like 4,000 people, uh, political exiles living in Ukraine now because they had to flee under Lukashenko because they were afraid of, of political persecution, right? Recently, one of these people who was leading the exiles in Ukraine, the political opposition to Lukashenko, was found hanged from a tree after he had taken a jog in a park. So this guy, Vitali, he got killed, right? And most people assume that it's some kind of branch within the Belarusian government who carried out the murder. And the problem is that it's beginning to look a lot like... <laughs> I was tempted to say Christmas. But uh, I don't think that's appropriate. Right now. It's beginning to look a lot like uh, the, the Russian government handling political opposition. Like not always, but sometimes, right? Where you hear these stories about political opposition falling out of a building and they get killed. And all of a sudden, there's no more political opposition. And we're not used to seeing that in Belarus. So it's a dramatic change. Most of the times when these things happen, the Russian government will say that it's the CIA or the MI5 or 6 or whatever. Whatever bloody, bloody UK. I can't do a UK accent. I've learned to be careful in judging other nations when talking about these stories with you guys because... There's only so much one person can know, but I do think that we're seeing a tendency of democracy in many places in Europe being put into question. Some nation leaders are beginning to openly say that maybe it's not a good idea because it's ineffective. But ineffective in what way exactly? But of course they're talking about it being ineffective because they can't just carry out whatever they want to. Democracy is supposed to stop one person from just taking over and do whatever they want. Either way, it looks like Belarus is going down a path that they will find it very hard to recover from if they don't turn things around. And that's just my two cents. As always, let me know what you guys think about this down below and remember to subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell as well so you get told about the next video. Thanks for watching until the end, guys. Wow, you stayed until the end, like even after the end. This is incredible. This is so rare. This is the internet. This is our generation, like attention span of a goldfish. 
We we can't focus this long. I don't understand. This is incredible. I I was losing faith in our generation, but you stayed longer. You're do you understand what this means? There's hope for this generation. Okay, all is not lost. There's still hope for this generation. I believe.